Hey everyone, Tyraku here, and today I want to go over what could be holding you back in the campaign. So, as a new player, typically your main goal is to go through the campaign as quickly as possible and to get three stars. There's three things that could be holding you back, and in today's video I'm going to go over specifically artifacts and go over everything a beginner needs to know about artifacts. Um, but, as I mentioned, the three things that could be holding you back could be your character level, which is shown right here in the bottom right, or up here, it could be your character's ascension level, which is upgraded through this panel right here, or thirdly, it could be your character's gear. And now, I want to make sure as a new player, there's not a ton of information when you first get into the game about the in-depth, I guess, more detailed aspects of how artifacts work. So I want to go over that and touch on it in this video, more of the basic side of things. So let's jump into the gear I have. First thing you see is probably these little star levels, okay? So what the stars basically say is they determine basically the stats. A higher star item is gonna be stronger and capable of having higher numbers than a lower star item. It doesn't necessarily mean it's better, but it's gonna have higher numbers. So for, an exa for example, let's look at two items that are pretty close. So this three star acts as 12 attack, this two star has eight attack. So the stats of the three star will always be higher, though the other substats could be different. Um, while we're talking about substats, let's jump into substats. Substats are the numbers below the um, bolded main stat. And how these work is each level, let's see, each level or each rarity, you get a different amount of substats. So with a common item, you start with zero substats. You don't have any substats whatsoever. When you upgrade this item to level four, you get one random substat. When you upgrade it to level eight, you get a second random substat. Level 12 and level 16, the same thing. Now, if you look at a, com uh, a green item or an uncommon item, you actually start with one substat. So when you get to level four, you actually gain a modifier to this substat right here. And let me show you that. So we're taking this helmet to level four. This is the only option it has. So we're getting a modifier to this number right here. So now you see the speed increased from two to now it's four. If you look at a blue item, we'll actually have two substats. So now we have the level four and the level eight. So if I take this to level eight, which I don't actually want to take this shield, let's find something a little better. Um, let me scroll through here real quick. Okay. All right, so here, level a blue item, let's take it to level eight. And what's gonna happen is whenever it hits level four, it's gonna actually assign to a random substat. So you'll see here, it gets assigned to the resistance. I can't select which one it gets assigned to, it's random. Um, now whenever it goes to level eight, it's once again gonna get assigned to a, another random substat assigned to a random one of these two, it's not gonna make another one. Now, when this goes, it could have it could have went to attack, it doesn't always stack like that. And now if I take this item to level 12, you're actually gonna get a entirely new substat unlocked, and the same thing at level 16. I'll go ahead and get this new one unlocked for the video purposes. These boots aren't bad, not necessarily the ones I would want to upgrade, but it's okay, so see, now you get a new substat unlocked right there. So that's how the substats work on items. A purple item starts with three substats, and then a legendary item will have all the substats unlocked, four. And it's gonna have the highest value potential. Now, going away from substats and talking about the main stats of artifacts, what you'll see is that all of the, t on the right-hand side over here, all of the top row artifacts have a specific main stat. They're always the same. So your weapon is always gonna have attack. Your helmet is always gonna have HP. Your shield is always gonna have defense. Now the bottom row can be variable. So the gloves, the specific ones I have on, have HP percent, the chest piece has resistance, and the boots have attack percent. Now, what I was saying is when you're going through the campaign, something that could be holding you back is not having your gear upgraded. So you wanna make sure your gear is upgraded um, typically between 8 and 12 can get you through normal campaign, uh, but 
another key thing related to gear is the set bonuses. So if you look at my character right here, you'll see two little icons underneath the set info. And these are the set bonuses he has. The one he has is lifesteal, heals about 30% of damage dealt, and the second is immortal, HP plus 15% and heals by 3% every turn. Now where that number is coming from is from the items that I have. Let's scroll down to the specific set. So I don't have an ex I don't have any more pieces of immortal, but I'll give you an idea with cruel. So right here in the cruel section, you'll see it has a parenthesis, a two and a parenthesis. This means it takes two pieces of gear, two artifacts per set. It takes two pieces of this gear to give you this set bonus. Now, if you go up to the life steal, it takes four pieces of this gear to give you this set bonus. You can stack set bonuses, obviously, because I mean, I'm doing it right now. Now, with the life steal, if you have three pieces, you won't get this extra 30% heal whenever you deal damage once you add that fourth piece you'll get that set bonus it's okay to have broken sets but sometimes it's worth sacrificing a little lesser piece of gear for the set bonus especially when it comes to things like lifesteal lifesteal set bonus is so powerful that if you're not actually getting if you're if you're going for the set bonus and you're one piece of gear short then it's it's worth typically swapping out that gear to get the full set bonus. So in this video, we and, and the set bonuses are always described right underneath the uh, item set. You can also close everything here and see all of the item sets you have if you wanna look through them quicker. And they just recently, as of today actually, released this filter system, which makes it pretty easy to organize your gear. And as you can see here, you actually are not able to uh, for example, gloves. All these grayed out things are stats that gloves are not able to have. So as you can see here, gloves cannot have speed, resist, or accuracy. Chest pieces cannot have speed, crit rate, crit damage. Boots cannot have crit rate, crit damage, resist, or accuracy, but they can have anything else. So that is a pretty neat little feature they just added recently. You can actually go through here and select specific things. So say I wanted gloves with defense percentage, I would just select that and could find the exact piece of gear, which makes it really easy to search through your artifacts. And now this is a little past artifacts. You'll get more jewelry as you go throughout the game. Um, jewelry is farmed through spiders, it's a little bit harder to get, but it, it works just the same way as artifacts do. It has a main stat and it has a subsets below it. If you're ever stuck in the campaign and you're not sure what you can do to progress and get out of um, like a slump or if you're just stuck, go in, check your gear, give it some upgrades, make some tweaks, maybe change out the set and see how you perform after that. But that's the overview of gear. So you got the star levels, you got the upgrades, the substat increases at 4, 8, 12, and 16, and you have the rarities with common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary, each level having different amounts of substats already set to them. And that is actually all for today's video. Um, that's the basics of artifacts and how they work within Raid Shadow Legends. If you have any questions about this video or have any ideas for future videos, let me know, leave it in the comment below. I am live streaming on Twitch most days from starting at about 11 p.m. EST, going until about two or three. I typically play on this free-to-play account primarily. I do have a level 60 account as well, but I'm focusing this channel more around beginners. I will be creating a clan soon, so keep an eye out for that. Um, wanna, I wanna make sure we can get all the free-to-play players or beginning players to kill the clan boss easily in each day. The uh, rewards are great from that. So. Feel free to tune over to my Twitch. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to my Twitch and my Discord channel. Hop in the Discord channel, chat. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day.